Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live here in San Francisco for Amazon's Web Services Summit. Uh, this is the smaller event compared to reInvent, uh, the big conference in Vegas, which we were broadcasting live. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. This is theCUBE, our flagship program, where we go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise, and uh, an Amazon show would not be complete without talking to the Amazon guys directly about what's going on under the hood. And our next guest is Adi Krishnan and Ryan Waite of Run the Kinesis teams, guys, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. So we, Dave Vellante and I, who's not here, unfortunately has another commitment, but we were going gaga over the Kinesis. We love Redshift, we love going with the data. I see Glacier is a really low cost option to store stuff, but when you start adding on Redshift and now Kinesis, you're adding in some new features that really kind of, really point to where the market's going, which is, I need to deal with real-time stuff, I need to deal with a lot of data, I need to manage it effectively, I need low latency across any work use case. Okay, so how the hell do you come up with Kinesis? Give us the insight into how it all came together. We love the real time. We love how it's all kind of closing the loop, if you will, for a developer. Um, and just take us through how it came about. What are some of the stats now post reInvent? Share with us. Uh, well, the, uh, the genesis for Kinesis was trying to solve our metering problems. The, the metering problem inside of AWS is how do we keep track with how our customers are using our product. So every time a customer does a read out of DynamoDB, or they uh, read a file out of S3, or they do some sort of uh, transaction uh, with any of our products, that generates a metering record. It's tens of millions of records per second, and uh, tens of terabytes per hour. So it's a, a big workload. And what we were trying to do is understand how to transition from being a batch-oriented processing workload, where we're using large Hadoop clusters to process all that data, to uh, a continuous processing model, where we could read all of that data in real time and make decisions on that data in real time. So you basically had a, created an aspirin for yourself. You kind of had yeah. a little pain point internally, right? Yeah, Kinesis you know. is kind of an example of us building a product to solve some of our own problems first, uh, and then making that available to the public. Okay, so when you guys do your Amazon thing, which I've gotten to know about a little bit of the culture there, you guys kind of break stuff, kind of the quote Zuckerberg, you guys built, kind of invented that philosophy, you know, moving stuff good quickly, iterating fast. So you solve your own problem, and then was there an aha moment like, hell damn, this is good, we could bring it out to the market. What were customers asking for at the same time? Was it kind of a known use case? Did you bring it to the market? What happened next? We spent a lot of time talking to a lot of customers. I think that was kind of the, the, the gist of it. Uh, we had customers from all different sorts of industry verticals, uh, financial services, uh, consumer online services, from manufacturing, from digital ad tech, come up to us and say, we have this canonical workflow. This workflow is about getting data of all of these producers, uh, the sources of data, figuring out a way to aggregate that data, and then driving it through a variety of different processing systems to ultimately light up different data stores. Uh, these data source could be native to AW stores like S3, DynamoDB. Uh, they could be uh, more interesting, uh, higher end data warehousing services uh, like Redshift. Mm -hmm. But the key thing was how do we deal with all this massive amount of data that's being produced in real time, ingest it reliably, scale it elastically, and enable continuous crossing on that data. You know, we always love the word elastic. It's a you know term that, that you guys have built your business around. Being elastic it means some, it means you have a lot of flexibility, and that's a key part of being agile. But I want you guys to, while we're here on the queue, define kinesis for the folks out there. What the hell is it? Define it for the record, and then I have some specific questions I want to ask. Uh, so kinesis is a new service for processing huge amounts of streaming data in real time, short and simple. It scales elastically, so as your data volume increases or decreases, the service grows with you. And you so can... like a Node.js error log or an mm -hmm. iPhone data, this is an example, would this be an example of streaming? Yeah, exactly. You can imagine that you were tailing a whole bunch of logs coming off of servers. You could also be watching event streams coming out of uh, little Internet of Things type devices. Uh, one of our customers we're talking about here is uh, Supercell, who's capturing uh, in-game data from their game Clash of the Clans. So as you're playing Clash of the Clans, and you're tapping on the screen, all of that data is captured in Kinesis and then processed by, uh, by Supercell. And this is validated, I mean obviously, you mentioned some of the use cases, Internet of Things, which is a sensor network to wearable computers mm -hmm. to whatever, mobile phones, and obviously event data coming off machines. So you got machine data, you got human data, you got application data. That's kind of the data sets we're seeing with Kinesis, right? right. Traverse set. Um, also traction with trends like Spark out of Berkeley, you're seeing in memory. Is this mm -hmm. kind of, 
How does this in your wheelhouse, how does that all relate to? Because you guys have purpose-built SSDs now in your new EC2 instances and all this new modern gear we heard in the announcements. How does all the in-memory stuff affect the Kinesis service? It's a, a great question. I, what you can imagine is Kinesis is being a great service for capturing all of that data that's being generated by you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of sources. It gets uh, sent to Kinesis where we replicate it across three different availability zones. That data is then made available for applications to process. Uh, those applications that are processing that data could be uh, Hadoop clusters, they could be your own Kinesis applications, and it could be a Spark cluster. And so writing Spark applications that are processing that data in real time is a, is a great use case. And the in-memory capabilities of Spark are probably ideal for being able to process data that's stored in Kinesis. Okay, so let's talk about some of the uh, connecting the dots. So Kinesis works in conjunction with what other services are you seeing that is being adopted most right now? Now, so I mentioned Redshift, I'm just throwing that in there. I see a data warehousing like tool, I'm seeing a lot of business intelligence. So basically people are playing with data, a lot of different needs for the data. So how does Kinesis connect through the stack? I, th I think the, uh, the number one use case we see is customers capturing all of this data and then archiving all of it right away to S3. Like, it's just been difficult to capture everything. Right? And even if you did, you probably could keep it for a little while and then you had to get, you had to get rid of it. But uh, with the, the prices for S3 being so low and Kinesis being so easy to capture tiny writes, these little tiny tails of, of log data that are coming out of your servers or little bits of data coming off of mobile devices, capture all of that, aggregate it, and put it in S3. That's the number one use case we see. As customers are becoming more sophisticated with using Kinesis, they then begin to run real-time uh, dashboards on top of uh, Kinesis data. So you could push all the data into DynamoDB, or you could push all that data into uh, even something like Redshift and run analytics on top of that. The final case is people then doing real-time decision-making based on Kinesis. So once you've got all this data coming in, you're putting it into uh, DynamoDB or Redshift or EMR, you then process it and then start making decisions, automated decisions that uh, take advantage of the real-time nature. So essentially you're taking us down the life, life cycle of kind of like yeah. man walking the wreck at some point, right? Yeah. It's like they start small, they store in the data, usually probably a developer problem, you know, yeah. just inefficiencies, log file management. I mean, yep. It's a disaster, we know. It's a pain in the butt for a developer. So yep. step one is solve that pain, triage that. And Next then, step is, okay, I'm dashboarding, I'm starting to learn about the data. Right. And then three is more advanced, like real-time decision making. So like yeah. now that I've got the data coming in in real time, I'm now going to act on it. Yeah, so what I want to bring that up, this is more of a theoretical kind of orthogonal conversation is, what you guys are basically doing is, is we, we like that silicon angles like to point out mm -hmm. to kind of what's weird in the market and kind of why it's important. And that is the data things, the stuff you're doing with data really points to a new developer paradigm. And I want to get you guys comments on this. No one's really come out yet and said, Here's a development kit or development environment for data. You're seeing companies like Factual doing some amazing stuff. I don't know if you know those guys. Uh, just met with um, uh, New Relic. They launched kind of this data off the application. So you're seeing, you're seeing what you guys are doing. You can imagine that now the developer framework is, hey, I have to deal with data as a resource construct. So you haven't seen anything. So I want to get your thoughts. Do you see that happening uh, in that direction? How will data be presented to developers? Is it going to be abstracted away? Will there be development environments? Is it a matter of just organizing the data? What's your vision around that? Go ahead. Yeah. So th that's a really good question because we've got customers that come up to us and say, I want to meld real-time data with batch processing. Or I have my data that is right now lots of little data, and now I want to go ahead and aggregate it to make sense of it over a longer period of time. And there's a lot of theory around how data should be modeled, how data should be represented. Uh, but the way we are taking the evolution step here is really learning from our customers. Right? And customers come up and say, we need the ability to capture data quickly, but then what I want to do is apply my existing Hadoop stack and tools to my data, because I know and understand that. And as a response to that customer demand uh, was the EMR connector. So now customers can use say, Hive queries or cascading scripts and apply that to real-time data that Kinesis is ingesting. Another response to customers was that, that some customers said we really like the, the, the stream processing construct of Storm. And so our, our step over there was to say, okay, we ship the Kinesis Storm spout. So now customers can bring their choice of paradigm in and meld that with Kinesis. 
So I think the the, the short answer there right now is that you know the key thing is to learn from customers. It's early. It's, it's, it's early. early. It's really early, right? I, I would also add like like just with uh, as with Hadoop, there's so many different ways to process data. In the real time space, there are going to be so many different ways that people process that data. There's never going to be a single tool that you use for processing real time data. It's a lot of tools, and it adapts to the way that people think about data. So this also brings us back to the DevOps culture, which you guys essentially founded at Amazon early in the early days. And you know, I got to give you credit for that. You guys deserve it. DevOps was was really about building from the ground up, <laughs> the cloud. Which post dot com bubble really? If you think about it, right. that's Amazon's. You you lived your own your own world, right, to survive with less and, and help other developers. But that brings up a good point, right? So, okay, if data's early, and I'm now going to be advancing slowly, can there be a single architecture for dealing with data? Or is it going to be specialized systems? You're seeing Oracle made some, made some little progress with engineered systems. You're seeing integrated stacks work. So what's the take on the data equation? Not just Hadoop, there's other data out there. It's like right. the Internet of Things data. What is the preferred architecture right now? I think what we're going to see is a set of patterns that begin to evolve. And people will be using those patterns for doing particular types of processing. Uh, one of the other teams that I run at AWS is the fraud detection team. And we use a set of machine learning algorithms to be able to continuously monitor usage of the, the cloud to identify patterns of behavior which are indicative of fraud. Um, that kind of pattern of use is very different than I'm doing clickstream analysis, right? And the kind of pattern that we use for doing that would, would naturally be different. I think we're going to see a canonical set of patterns. I don't know if we're going to see a very particular set of technologies. Though. Yeah, so that brings us back to the DevOps thing. So, uh, Adi, I want to get your take on this because DevOps is really about efficiencies. Software yeah. guys don't want to be hardware guys. At the end of the day, that's how it all started. I don't want to provision the network. I don't want to stack the servers. I just want to push code. And then you guys have created some really easy ways to make that completely transparent. Uh, but now you're talking about composite application development. You're saying, hey, I'm going to have an EMR over here for my Hadoop cluster. And I'm going to deal with some maybe fraud detection stream data that's going to be a different system than Hadoop or it could be a relational database. Now I need to basically compositely build an app. That's what we're talking about here, composite construction uh, resource. Is that kind of the new DevOps 2.0? Because what I'm trying to tease out here is what's next after DevOps? I mean, DevOps really means there's no operations. And how does a developer deal with these kinds of complex environments like fraud detection, maybe application here, a container for this pass? So is it going to be fully composite? Well, I don't know if we run the full circuit with the DevOps uh, development model. It's a great model. It's worked really well for a number of, of startups. However, making it easy to be able to plug different components together, like it's just a great idea. So like, as Adi mentioned just a moment ago, our ability to take data in Kinesis and pump that right into uh, Elastic MapReduce, that's great and it makes it easy for people to use their existing applications with a new system like Kinesis. That kind of you know, composing of applications, it's, it's worked well for a long time and I think you're just going to see us continuing to do more and more of that kind of work. So I got to ask both of you guys a question. Give me an example of when something broke internally this is not an aside, I'm trying, I don't want to go negative here, but you got, your, part of your culture is, is to move fast, iterate. So when you, these important projects like Kinesis, give me an example of like, that was a helpful way when you guys stumble. What did you learn? And what was the key pain points of the evolution of getting it out the door? Uh, and what key things did you learn from either success or kind of a speed bump or uh, you know, failure along the way? Well, I think, uh... I think one of the first things we learned right after we'd shipped uh, Kinesis, and we were still in a, a limited preview, so we were, we were trying it out with our customers, we were getting feedback and learning what, uh, what they wanted to, to change in the product. Uh, one of the first things that we learned was that the, uh, the amount of time that it took to put data into Kinesis and receive a return code was too high for a lot of our, our customers. It was probably around 100 milliseconds uh, for the time that you put the data in to the time that we've replicated that data across multiple availability zones and returned success to the client. Uh, that was that was a moment for us to really think about what it meant to enable people to be pushing tons of data yeah. into Kinesis, and Still we went not back. not bad, 100 milliseconds is not that slow. No, it wasn't, it's it wasn't too bad. Uh, it's like, but right away, <laughs> we, uh, we went back and, and, uh, and doubled our efforts and we came back in around you know, somewhere between 30 and, and 40 milliseconds depending on 
your uh, network connectivity. Yeah, hey, in the old days, that was that was the spinning disk of the hard 10, 20 meg hard disk on a PC. <laughs> that's right. You know, that's right. getting those Lotus files out, you know, or accessing those Windows files. So you guys improve performance. So that's an example you guys done that. What's the biggest surprise that you guys have seen from a customer use case that was kind of like, wow, this is really something that we didn't see happening on a, on a larger scale that, that caught you by surprise? Uh, surprising use case. Yeah, I, it could I, be a corner use case, like, wow, I never figured that. You know, I, I would say, like, uh, some of the one thing that actually surprised us was how common it is for people to have multiple applications reading out of the same stream. Uh, like, again, the, the basic use case for so many customers is I'm going to take all this data and I'm just going to throw it into S3. Uh, and we kind of envisioned that uh, there might be a couple of different applications reading data out of that stream. But we, we have a couple of customers that actually have uh, as many as three applications that are reading that stream of events that are coming out of Kinesis. Each one of them is reading from a different position in the stream. They're able to read from different locations, process that data differently. But uh, but the idea that Kinesis is so different from traditional queuing systems and yet provides uh, real-time functionality that, and, and that multiple applications can read from it, that was that was a bit of a... All right, uh, so who's the shift. number one use case right now who's adopting Kinesis? They're watching, folks watching out there, get the Kinesis brain trust right here within Amazon. Um, what are the, the killer no-brainer scenarios that you're seeing on the uptake side right now that people should be aware of that they haven't really kicked the tires on Kinesis, what they should be, what should they be looking at? Wow, well, I, I think the number one use case is log ingestion. So like I'm tailing logs that are coming off of uh, web servers, my application servers, uh, data that's just being produced continuously. I can grab all that data and very easily put it into uh, uh, something like S3. The beauty of that model is I now have all the log data and I got it off of all of my hosts as quickly as possible and I can go do log dives later if there's a problem. That is the slam dunk use case for, for using Kinesis. Uh, there are other scenarios that are beginning to emerge as well. I don't know, Adi, if you want to talk yeah, about the, the more the other one that's, uh, that's very interesting and lots of customers are doing so already is emit data from all sorts of devices. So this is de these devices are not just your smartphones and tablets that are practically full form computing machines, but also seemingly low power, seemingly dumb devices. Yeah. And the desire remains the same. There are millions of these out there, and having the ability to capture the data that they produce in real time is key. You know, I think just to, just to highlight that, one of the things I'm hearing on the Cube interviews, all the customers we talk to is, the number one thing is, I just got to store the data, I know what I want to do with it yet. Now, that's, that's a practice that's a hangover from the BI data warehousing business of just store from a compliance reasons. Now, which is basically like, I, that's like Glacier as far as I'm concerned. Traditional business intelligence systems are like their version of Glacier. It's shipped out somewhere and give me those reports, five weeks later they come back. But that's different. Now you see people store the data and they realize I need to touch it faster. I don't know yet when. That's why I'm teasing out this whole development 2.0 model because I'm just seeing more and more uh, people want the data hanging around, but not fully parked out at Glacier or some sort of, you know, compliance storage solution. You know, I, I think I, I think I, I, I kind of understand where you're going. There's, uh, I'm going to use a model for like how we used to do BI analytics in, in our own uh, internal data warehouse. I also run the data warehouse for AWS. Um, and the classic BI model there is somebody asks a question, we go off and we just do some analysis, and if it's a, a question that we're going to ask repeatedly, we build you know, a special fact table or a dimensional view or something to be able to grind through that particular view and do it very quickly. Uh, Kinesis offers a, a different kind of data processing model, which is I'm collecting all of the data. I make it easy to capture everything. But now I can start doing things like, oh, there's, there's certain pieces of data that I want to respond to quickly. Just like we would create dimensional views that would give us access to particular sets of data in very quick uh, pace, we can now also respond to when those events are generated very quickly. Well, you guys are the young guns in the industry now. I'm a little bit older, and the gray hair showing. We actually used the word data processing back in the day. The data processing, the, the DP department, or the MIS department. If you remember those those days, MIS was the management information. Are we going back to those terms? I mean, we're, look at look what's happening. Is it the software mainframe? the cloud. I mean, these are some of the words you're using, just data processing, data pipeline, well, MIS. I, <laughs> we, that's my word. But, I mean, I, we're back to those old school 
stuff, but different look and feel. Well, and I, I think those kinds of very generic terms make a lot of sense for what we're doing, as we, especially as we move into these brand new spaces, like, yeah. wow, what do I do with real-time data? Like, real-time data processing is kind of the third type of big data processing, where data warehousing was the first type. I know what my data looks like, I create indices, like a pre-computation of the data. Uh, a Hadoop clusters in the MapReduce model was kind of the second wave of, of big data processing. And real-time processing, I think, will be the third wave of, of big data processing. Well, I'm getting the hook here, but I, I got to just say, you guys are doing an amazing job. We're big fans of Amazon. I always say that, uh, you know, it's very rare in the history of the world, you look at uh, innovations like the printing press, uh, the Wright brothers with Discover, you know, flying and things like that. Amazon with the cloud, you guys have done something that's pretty amazing, but what I find fascinating is, it's very rare to see a company that's commoditizing and disrupting and innovating at the same time. And it's really a unique value proposition. And the competition is responding, IBM, Google. So you guys have a lot of targets painted on your back by a lot of big players. So uh, one, congratulations on your success, which means that you, you know, you're not going to go in the open field and fight the, the, the British if they said use the American Revolution analogy. You've got to continue to compete. So what, what's your view of that? I mean, and I'm sure you don't talk about competition, you're probably told not to talk about it, but I mean, you got to know that all the guns are on you right now, and the, the big guys are putting up the seawall for your wave of innovation. How do you guys deal with that? What's your thoughts? Well, it, it, it's not like we, we ignore our competitors, but we obsess about our customers, right? Like, it's just constantly looking for what are people trying to do and how can we help them? And it can seem like a very simple strategy, but the strategy is build what people want, and we get a lot of great feedback on how we can make our products better, and, and that's what we do. It certainly will force you to up your game, right? When you have the competition sighting on you, you got to more focus on the customer, which is cool. But like, you guys kind of aware, like, game's on. I mean, Amazon, like Andy giving a little pep talk. Hey, game is on, guys. Let's rock and roll. Right. Well, I, you, I, you guys I, are aware, right? <laughs> we, I think we're we're totally aware, and I think we're actually sometimes a little surprised at how long it's taken our competitors to kind of get into this, this industry with us. So uh, again, as Andy talked about earlier today, we've had eight years in the cloud computing market. It's been a great eight years, and we have a lot of work to do, a lot of stuff that we're going to be bringing Almost ready for middle school. Um, <laughs> final final question for you guys, and give you the final word here. Share with the folks on the, on the last word is, why is this show so important right? at this point in time? In this market, why is this environment of, of the thousands of people that are here learning about Amazon? Why? What should they know about why this is such an important uh, event? Uh, well, I, I think our summits are a great opportunity for us to share with customers how to use our AWS services, learn firsthand from uh, not only our hands-on labs but also our partners that are providing information about how they use uh, AWS resources. It's, it's a great opportunity to meet a lot of people that are taking advantage of the cloud computing wave and see how to use the cloud most effectively. Daddy? It's just a great time to be in the cloud right now. And with all these amazing services coming up, there's no better mind meld of people coming together. And so that's probably as good a reason as any. You guys are doing a great job disrupting, changing the future, modern enterprise, modern business, modern applications. It's exciting to watch. And if you guys keep focusing on your customers with that customer base, if you keep up the, the, the pace, that's the yeah. question, can you finish the race? That's what I always tell Dave Vellante. I know Dave's watching. Dave, shout out to Dave Vellante, who's on the mobile app right now, he's uh, traveling. Uh, guys, thanks for coming inside. Kinesis, great stuff, closing the loop real time. Uh, Amazon really building it out. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. Thank you.